As many of you may already know, I made a few videos last year breaking down my exact Google Ads strategy that generated me over six figures a month. In today's video, we're going to be doing a 2023 version, and I'm going to be revealing my exact Google Ads strategy that helps me achieve around two to three hundred thousand dollars a month in sales. And in this video, are strategies you can use if you are a complete beginner and just have a brand new Google Ads account, or if you are already running Google Ads, there are going to be some very good tips in this video that will help you scale and find consistent results because I know that is one of the main things a lot of people struggle with Google is consistency but just before we do jump into this video I want to very quickly mention my discord server I'll leave a link in the description to that so definitely go ahead and join that as well and I also do have a Google Ads agency as you guys already know so if you are struggling and want us to do the work for you manage scale your ads just drop me a message on Twitter or Instagram and we'll take a look at that for you now very quickly I just want to show you my last 30 days of Google results just to show you that the methods I'm going to be showing in this video have provided me with consistent results for several years now but we'll just take a quick look at the last 30 days on your screen now is my last 30 days for my UK business you can see we've spent just over 24,000 pounds and we have generated just over 70,000 pounds in revenue again tracked revenue Google similarly with Facebook doesn't track 100% of the conversions it does track better than Facebook but still not quite accurate so this is probably more 80, 85,000 pounds of sales when converted is about $100,000. Now if we switch over to the US account, you can see we've spent a little bit more than the UK business, just under 34,000 pounds in ad spend, generating over 100K in sales. So that is just over a $200,000 a month when you combine both of the tractor revenue for my businesses. One thing I do wanna stress very quickly, if you are brand new with Google, you're not gonna see results like this immediately. Google takes time and it takes patience. So it's not like TikTok where you could actually have the overnight success that you might be after. But in the long run, you can sell products all year round that people are gonna need and you don't rely on trends and things like that. And that is why Google Ads is by far my favorite advertising platform. And for the purpose of this video, we will just be using my US ad account. Now, obviously you wanna make sure you've got your Google Merchant Center set up. Yes, a lot of people do face suspensions with Merchant Center and there isn't a secret formula to get you unsuspended or for you to avoid it. It seems like it is just down to a bit of luck, but my suggestion would be if you haven't submitted your products to Merchant Center yet, just thoroughly read through Google's policies and make sure nothing you are doing goes against their policies. Luckily for me, touch wood, I have not encountered any issues with that. So the first thing I wanna be sharing with you in this video is gonna be the standard shopping campaign strategy. This is leaning more so towards people who are just starting now, or if you've got a low budget perhaps and you want to get started with Google so what I do here is I create a new campaign now assuming you are an e-commerce business you want to hit sales and then make sure your conversion tracking is set up before we go any further you must have conversion tracking set up on your Google Ads account it's not as simple as like a Facebook pixel where you just copy a piece of code or you know a random number from Shopify to Google I personally paid a developer on Fiverr to do this for me it was very good very reasonably priced and did it very quickly. I have recommended him before to a lot of you and you guys have used his service. So I'll leave a link to him down below on Fiverr. If you're having trouble with setting up your conversion tracking, hit him up. He will do this for you very quickly. And you really shouldn't be running any ads on Google until you've done this because you will literally be wasting your money. Okay. Anyway, then you want to hit the search tile here. Now it will keep prompting you throughout these sort of campaign creations to switch over to performance max. That is not what we're talking about at this moment I will be discussing that in a little bit in this video but for this bit you want standard shopping and again they try and sell you the Pmax dream here but for brand new accounts it's really risky so we're playing it safe here go ahead and hit continue and it will take you over to the next page where you start making the campaign and details about it now you want to enter your campaign name here we'll just call this standard shopping campaign one now for these additional settings here I don't touch them the bid strategy is something that I do recommend you test throughout your Google Ads ads journey but for standard shopping I really do like to just use manual CPC without this box ticked the enhanced CPC just what I found works best for me for you it might work best if you turn this on but to begin with I personally turn it off and further down the line you might want to run an experiment or a split test to see if this actually benefits you or not now in terms of budget a lot of people ask me you know how much money do I need to be spending a day on Google I say if you can $50 or 50 pounds a day really will help 
you but you can go as low as 20 to 30 pounds a day but this will take you longer to gather data and potentially scale so if you can 50 a day is definitely what you want to be doing campaign priority you can leave as low now what this essentially means is if you've got a product in two shopping campaigns and one campaign is set to higher priority and one is set to low the campaign with the higher priority will take favor over the lower priority but it is very rare in my case certainly that I have products in more than one shopping campaign so you don't really need to worry about this and you're better off just leaving it at default whilst making your campaign I do like to include search partners for this particular step again further down the line you can test by turning it off and see if it approves your results devices you can't change please make sure you are targeting the country that you're product feed is submitted to merchant center in you know if you're selling in the us and you're based in the uk like i am you want to make sure you change this over to united states just by typing in and hitting target there it's put uk here because i'm based in the uk but obviously for this business it is a usa based business so make sure you do that and don't miss that step start an end date you don't want to have an end date start date can be midnight the next day but you might as well just leave it as today's date and ad group name i literally just leave it as ad group one and i put a bid usually one pound fifty if you are selling really high ticket products that you already know have an average cost per click of like two three four dollars then you obviously want to be having you know a five pound for example max cost per click but for most people watching this video i assume you're selling products anywhere from sort of twenty dollars to a hundred dollars so you know 1.5 will be fine and don't worry you will be adjusting the cost per click you want to pay per product rather than you know the whole campaign in general it doesn't really matter to be honest as long as this is set higher than all the products in your campaign so next up hit create campaign very simple but there are a few more steps you want to be doing within the campaign screen here so what this is essentially done is put all of our products into this particular ad group now if there's any products you want to turn off or remove what you want to be doing hitting this little plus button here change this to item id so what i personally do is i just tick all the boxes here continue to edit bids and then what you want to do hit save and this has basically separated all your products out individually so you can manage them individually and you can set your max cost per click bid per product which really does help optimize your campaign from the early stages and will allow you to bid efficiently on the product level like i said if there's a product you want to remove all you need to do is click on the little green circle here hit exclude and then that product has been excluded from your campaign i also like to exclude this top thing here everything else in all products because you've already separated all of your products out into individual sections you don't want to have this as well it just doesn't need to be turned on basically now you might be wondering what you should be choosing as your bids on the product level you want to be using keyword planner for this i know you can't see the top bar but if you click the tools and settings bar head over to keyword planner here and it'll take you to this screen hit discover new keywords change the country here here to the country you are selling in so obviously for me here is the United States now if we just use the example here uh, product we can go mini fridge let's have a look so you want to basically just put in your product name in the search bar hit search and it will give you top of bid low range here and top of bid high range to begin with I always focus on this column here the low range and I like to put my bids around two or three cents or two or three P higher than the minimum bid here so for the mini fridge you can see it's 31 P I would then go and set my budget here let's say this product's the mini fridge i would set this at you know 34p for example yes it's playing it's safe but one of our goals here is to not waste money if a product is not spending at all you can over time gradually increase this and then you'll find that sweet spot of where it is actually spending money and you know getting you sales so just to begin with just set this bid you know two three four cents above the minimum page bid that is shown on keyword planner and make sure you go through all your products and do that as well now one thing you can do you don't have to more so if you are a general store with a variety of collections and different types of products is create multiple ad groups with different product categories so for example if you have got a general store and you're selling kitchenware and then you've also got dog toys or you know pet products you might want to have an ad group that has pet products as the title and then another one for example for kitchen items and then you can put the products into each of these ad groups respectively it's just a good way to separate these products
products so they're not getting combined together and it just helps when you're managing your bids your data and when you eventually start looking at your search terms and keywords you don't need to do this but if you like an organized account and you like to see data a bit clearly definitely helps avoid a few headaches now when you get to the point where your ads are spending you want to be taking a look at the search terms your shopping ads are appearing for because believe it or not they will start to appear in front of pretty random search terms and irrelevant search terms and terms you just know have nothing to do with your product now in the early stages I like to look at this on a daily basis and all you simply do is hit the keywords tab on the left hand side here hit search terms and I mean obviously this is a new campaign I've created for this video but on this screen for you you'll have loads of different search terms you can filter it by clicks costs you know conversions click-through rate and things like that and all you want to do is go ahead and tick down the side here any keywords that are relevant for example if you're selling a mini fridge and some of your keywords are like double size giant American fridge freezer for example you're going to want to exclude that because yes it's a still a fridge but you're selling a mini fridge and this person or these people have searched for you know one of those big double door open fridges and and it's just gonna waste your money because they're not gonna go ahead and buy your mini fridge. So again, over time, you'll develop a big negative keyword list. And like I said, you wanna tick them and up here, a little blue box will appear and you just wanna click add to negative keyword list or whatever the button is. It's pretty self-explanatory, but that means these search terms won't be applicable for your campaign again. And over time, you'll eventually have a long keyword, negative keyword list. And this is just another great way that optimizes your campaign and focuses on the search terms and queries that will drive you sales. Now, one last thing I want to quickly mention before we jump into the performance max section of this video is when to kill a product now this is a phrase I don't really like to use with Google it's not like Facebook or TikTok a lot of people ask me this now there's not a number I use and kill a product by for example if a product has spent 100 pounds and not had a sale I won't kill it because there is a million things that you can change that could make that product a high converting product I've made an entire video on this but just to briefly summarize if a product is spending within your shopping campaign and not getting sales you can test so many things that could change the results for that product that be changing the price and that doesn't necessarily mean reducing the price for me increasing the price on a few products in the past has actually increased the conversion rate you can test brand new product images you can add new reviews to your website and by that I mean new product reviews on the landing page you can completely change the product description by adding gifts you know key benefits key points things like that there's so many things you can do for me personally I change one thing at a time so then it's clear to see what change has worked and hasn't worked but usually for me a simple image change or adding a few new reviews to the product page does help so don't panic if a product is spending and not getting conversions be patient make a few subtle changes and you may be surprised and you may wake up to a few sales okay now performance max this is for me a great campaign type for my businesses for my clients as well and it has allowed me to scale my businesses two three four x over the last 12 months or so i incorporated pmax last summer before it was mandatory but since that change my ability to scale has become a lot easier now like i said earlier on in the video if you have got a brand spanking new account i would probably avoid this because it will absolutely destroy your budget and might not get you anything in return but if you've already had conversions being tracked through your account if your account isn't brand new and you have been testing with standard shopping you may want to just jump straight to this step here but please do be careful because pmax does eat your budget very quickly now setup process very straightforward again hit sales again please make sure your conversion tracking is set up if it isn't use the link in the description for my developer on Fiverr. Now, make sure you're selecting Pmax here, make sure your merchant center is linked and we'll just keep the campaign name the default one for now. Now, daily budget. More often than not, this will eat your budget and it may even spend double in the first few days. I have seen that, don't panic if it does that. Over a 30 day period, it won't spend more than your 30 day times your daily budget. Now, personally, Pmax, unlike standard shopping, you can run 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars a day. I wouldn't go near Pmax if you can't run this campaign at a minimum of a hundred dollars or pounds per day. And that is because this campaign is not just spending on the shopping network, it is spending in other areas too, like search, YouTube, display, Gmail. So there is a lot more space to cover, and that is what this campaign needs. It needs budget. Bidding, for me personally, I have never seen any success in any campaign type with 
with conversions, maximize conversions. For me, it has always been conversion value. Now, if you don't select a target ROAS, this campaign will 100% spend your daily budget. Be careful. Now, if you are already setting your PMAX campaign up, you probably have a good idea what your average ROAS was on your standard shopping campaigns or just your account in general. So I personally would use a target ROAS. You can see for me, it's automatically filled mine in at 340%. I run PMAX on both of my businesses and my clients' accounts, and the average target ROAS I set is anywhere from three to 400%, but that is completely based on your business. You might need to set a higher target ROAS to break even. Obviously, if you set it something stupidly like a thousand percent, this campaign won't spend, so be reasonable. Uh, for the sake of this, we'll set it at 340%. Now, I've just clicked the button there below, um, optional settings. I didn't actually grab that on record, but this is a very important step, more hidden than the standard shopping actually, but make sure you are selecting your target targeting country. I've personally made this mistake myself and not selected any targeting country uh, with my PMAX campaigns and it ends up absolutely spending so much money in random countries around the world, not any specific countries, just any other country that isn't the United States. So make sure you are selecting your country of sale. Language, usually just leave it English. And final URL expansion. I do like to have this turned on. I have split tested this in a few of my campaigns and I haven't seen too much difference in having it on or off so I just like to leave it on and then in the more settings down here you don't need to change anything that's pretty spot on now before you can make the campaign it will prompt you to make your first asset group now what this essentially is is a collection of content from your website let's say this is a one product asset group you would include images of your product you'd include videos YouTube videos if you've got them they do very well headlines descriptions you know extra site links and things like that now I'll be talking a bit in detail in a minute about what to include in your asset groups but for me recently a feed only asset group has been performing really well and what this essentially is is you add your products here in the merchant center section you tick the products you want and what you want to do in the asset section here is nothing just leave this completely blank and this will help and guide Google to only spend this budget on the shopping network and it won't go for things like YouTube display search things like that not 100% guaranteed but it definitely helps and I've seen very good results I've only tested this for myself in the last six weeks or so and it has done very very well I'll show you in a minute a feed only asset groups results and again for audience signal I leave this as blank no no audience signal for the feed only one so I am just going to change the name very quickly here so just to summarize this will focus on the shopping network only okay now you have created your performance max campaign you can absolutely leave it with just the one feed only asset group I personally wouldn't be against that if you are on the lower budget Budget end of around a hundred dollars a day it probably is worth leaving that as the only asset group to begin with just so you don't waste spend on things like display network and things like that but as you scale you will want to be adding in asset groups with content audience signals so I'm going to quickly go through that with you now so if we head over to asset groups here click add and then we want to just add a new asset group I'm just going to quickly break down things I add to mine that help and you can test and things like that so listing groups you just want to select the products that are in this campaign if this is a one product asset group or campaign, you want to make sure the final URL is the product URL. You don't have to, it's just what I personally do. Images, add up to 20 images. Add as many as you can. If you can add all 20, brilliant, different angles of the product, you know, lifestyle shots. Don't just use boring white background images. Obviously your logo should already be on there. And just fill out as much of this as you possibly can. You know, you can use things like ChatGPT to get some ideas if you're struggling. I wouldn't personally just copy and paste everything from an AI software like that. Add your own spin to it and just, you know, mix things up. It's just a good way to get some better ideas. But you want to add as many headlines as you can you can add up to five long headlines again up to five I like to throw things in here you know if you've got a discount on the product if you're running a sale you might want to add your shipping times if you do offer quick shipping you might want to say if you offer free shipping over a certain order value or if you do offer free shipping that's a great thing put in here and if this is a one product asset group or campaign you can also just put the product price up here as well it just helps with the potential visitor clicking on that link they know what to expect essentially before they land on your site they'll already know the product price you can add site links here for example if you're selling a product in different colors you can add different site
website links that will link to the different color variants. Call to action, you know, for me, I use shop now because I have two e-commerce businesses. So the asset section here is pretty straightforward. Now, one thing you want to be doing is split testing audience signals. Now, what an audience signal is, is not a guaranteed target for Google. It's not like Facebook, for example, used to be. It is essentially an audience you give to Google and it almost just, you know, pushes them into a certain direction and guides them into a direction where you're telling them, okay, my customer, my ideal customer looks like this and belongs to this group of people. It won't only show your ads to people within that audience. It will go out and beyond that targeting, but it just helps and it just guides them in the right way. Now, when you are in the audience signal section, you can go down to the interests and detailed demographic section and you can test things called in-market audiences. And what these are are audiences of people that are in the market or Google thinks are in the market to potentially purchase a certain product. We'll just use the fridge example again in this video. So you can search the word fridge and you can see you've got portable refrigerators here. So we would select that because we were selling the mini fridge and that would be an appropriate audience to test. Now, I like to just have one thing in each audience signal because if you start stacking things, you know, like changing ages, genders, if you start adding your own data, you're not gonna be able to tell what specific part of your signal is the reason an asset group is doing well. So in this instance, I would just put uh, as the audience name in market, then we would just call it portable fridges. So at least when we're analyzing our data, we know what the signal is that we're using here. And then once you've done that and filled out all your assets, you'd hit save and then that would be the audience signal you're using. Now there's no limit to how many you can have, I don't believe, or there's certainly not a limit I've reached on any account I manage. Now another great signal to test is a group of keywords. So we just call this, I just like to call them keyword one, two, three, four. Now it's under the custom segment section here. You just click the box and click new segment segment up here. Again, it will make you rename the segment. I just call it the same as the signal keywords one. Now in the box below, you can enter a variety of keywords, whatever you want, but obviously make sure they're related to your product. So again, for the example of the mini fridge, you can enter things like portable fridge, uh, office fridge, small electric fridge. You can use keyword planner to help you out with that, but I usually add anywhere from sort of 10 to 15 keywords, and then you would obviously hit save. That's then your audience signal for this asset group. And obviously you then just have a variety of asset groups split testing different audience signals and I let them run for a little bit I give them a chance but eventually you'll see asset groups that are outperforming one another and you just want to end up turning off the asset groups that aren't performing well for me what I do every time I turn off an asset group I will add a new one in and test another brand new audience signal now a good way to find in market audiences to test as signals as well as keywords you want to be exploring your insights tab here on the left hand side within your Pmax campaign. Obviously this is a brand new campaign I've just made so there is no data here at all. But eventually after some time, it will eventually give you a bunch of search terms that are performing well for you within this campaign. You could then copy and paste those search terms into the box that I just showed you when making an audience signal and then test that group of keywords as an audience signal because if it tells you they're doing well within the insights, odds are they might perform well as an audience signal. And the same goes, it will give you loads of different in-market audiences. It will tell you how how much more likely a customer is to purchase when they are in said in market group. So just switching over to one of my other campaigns here on the insights tab, you can see here uh, at the top, I'm obviously blurring out the keywords here because it will give away what I sell, but it will show you here, you know, these search terms here have generated me this amount of conversion value on average in the last seven days. And similarly, it will give me a load of in-market audiences down here, and it will tell me how much more likely someone is to convert on my site if they're part of this in-market audience. And you can see for the top one, if someone is in this first in-market audience, they are 24.6 times more likely to purchase from my website. So I am already doing this, but if you're not, you want to then test the signals that are being shown here because Google is telling you they're doing well so add them as an audience signal into your asset groups so all of this might seem daunting and quite complicated but once you get used to it it really is quite simple once you develop your own rhythm 
using your own methods and your own strategies. It's really good and really does help and it will help you build consistency with your results. Now, like I said at the start, you're not gonna see overnight success. With Google Ads, you need to stay patient and once you do make a Performance Max campaign, for example, just don't try and change loads of things on a daily basis. You need to give it time, allow the machine learning to do its thing and optimize. It is incredibly powerful when you leave it to it. But if you are in your account making changes multiple times a day on a daily basis, you really don't stand a chance. I know it's brutal, but I'm speaking from experience here. Now, just before we end, the only other thing I wanted to really mention, I have made an entire video on this. You can just go on my channel and search brand search campaign, but you wanna just make a quick search campaign on your ad account. Only $5 a day will do. You can set it to more if you are getting a lot of traffic. And all this is, is a simple search ad on Google. When people search your brand name or anything related to your brand name, you'll appear at the top. This will have a very high ROAS in most cases and will just help build more conversion data within your Google Ads account. And then that optimization and that data is shared across and just helps your other campaigns. So when you are setting up this campaign, you know, a simple maximize clicks will do. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And then when you're entering your keywords, I've just made a little thing here. You can just see on your screen, just have your brand name as one of them and then just add different terms to the end, like reviews, shipping time, things like that, discount code, because these are things people are going to search for and at only $5 a day, it just helps. You might as well do it and it does benefit your account massively. So I hope you have found this video useful. If you have, please drop a like down below. If you're new around here, please subscribe. I will be making more detailed Google videos in the coming months. I recently uploaded a similar video, but regarding Facebook ads and how I generate around $100,000 a month using Facebook ads, I break down my full strategy on that. That is a much shorter video because it is a lot more straightforward than this and less long-winded. So if you're also running Facebook ads, go and check that out. It will be definitely worth watching. And very quickly again, make sure you have your conversion tracking set up correctly on Google before you spend a penny. Make sure to use the Fiverr link in the description to use the same developer that set mine up. Anyway, enough rambling on. Thank you very much and I'll see you in my next video.